Uh, good morning, everybody, and distinguished guests, and my old friend, uh, Raj Chengappa Saab. Uh, first of all, let me express my deep gratitude to India Today Group for holding this uh, convention and for um, uh, and the, the state of the districts of uh, Punjab. So on behalf of government of Punjab, I would like to thank you. Uh, and like uh, Mr. Chengappa said, Punjab has uh, played a unique role in the history of the Indian subcontinent, uh, a role which is uh, completely disproportionate to the size and the population of Punjab. And for all eyes and for all times, Punjab has been an expression of hope, courage, and glory for the Indian subcontinent. And this does not need any testament from me or from any other man. Over the centuries, uh, having faced some of the fiercest challenges known to mankind, the name Punjab, the land of the five rivers, has continued to exist since uh, antiquity. And over the centuries, Punjab has sent its finest sons in the face of great danger to defend the territory and integrity of India. And all we have ever asked in return is enough land to bury those sons who did not come back. So from one end of the world to the other, Punjab has drunk deep the chalice of courage. And, uh, as uh, Mr. Chengappa was saying, despite being only 1.53% of India's land mass, Punjab continues to be the breadbasket of India. We, have we consistently contribute about 30% of uh, India's food grains. And uh, since we are today debating the challenges uh, which face Punjab's uh, economy and ch challenges which face Punjab as a whole. And without taking too much time, but uh, Raj, I thought I would put in context of uh, how Punjab is placed socially, politically, economically. Um, in 1947, I won't go beyond that, but uh, while India got its freedom, and it was uh, with a lot of uh, physical pain of British bullets and batons, and India was divided into two nations. But actually, India was not divided. It was Punjab and Bengal which were divided. Every other family living in Punjab actually had to migrate from Pakistan, having had to give up everything they owned. And in spite of, you know, you couldn't, a, a greater tragedy could not have visited Punjab than the partition of Punjab. And despite having gone through this tragedy, within 10 years, within one decade of peace, Punjab was able to build the Bhakra Dam, Chandigarh, Punjab Agriculture University. We had you know, set up ourselves a small industrial base. We had electricity had started coming to villages. But with just one decade of peace, and then the 60s, you know, we were again uh, in turmoil with the, the war in 62, war in 65, war in 71. And barely had we got one decade of peace in the 70s, Punjab was destabilized again uh, by our immediate neighbor. Uh, and that was in the form of terrorism, which took one full decade to subdue. And Punjab is probably one of the only few states in the world which has seen the back of terrorism. And barely had we come out of terrorism that uh, government of India announced a policy of giving uh, special uh, excise and income tax benefits to some of the <coughs> special category states. And in this case, <coughs> Himachal and Jammu and Kashmir, you just had to walk across the border. And uh, so the large scale flight of capital took place in the 80s, in the 90s, and barely had the sunset clause been uh, uh, introduced in that policy that uh, Two years back, uh, while uh, producing food grains and uh, uh, buying food grains, and I have Director uh, Food sitting in front of me, Mrs. Mitra, uh, there was a gap 
in the accounts of uh, our food department and the FCI to the tune of 31,000 crores. And we were burdened with, in one day, in one day, one day before the counting of the election, the previous government the f gave us a debt of 31,000 crores in one day. Punjab, uh, out of, and then GST was introduced, and Punjab is probably the only state where compensation is to the level of about 37%. Punjab has been structurally damaged by uh, the GST. But having said that, uh, I think uh, what, uh, as a finance minister, the challenge is in front of me, having, you know, whatever the circumstances, I'm just sure that given 10 years, the boundless uh, energy and talent of the people of Punjab, it's, it's like a flame. It can be hidden, but it can never be extinguished. And the role of my government is to reveal that phenomenal flame to the rest of the world. And the role of my government is like that of a canary, which guides the coal miners from the darkest recesses of the earth into light. And uh, what uh, the government has done in the last uh, two years, we have uh, cut down on our expenses. We have uh, uh, raised our sources of uh, revenue. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether a lot of your listeners or viewers would be familiar with, uh, Captain Amarinder Singh Ji took a very bold decision of abolishing truck unions in the state of Punjab. Uh, politically, it was a very tough call. We realized that uh, <clears throat> for Punjab to move forward, we will have to diversify agriculture from cereal crops. We have been consistently petitioning the government of India that uh, Punjab should be developed as the dairy state of India. And by dairy, I don't just mean producing milk, but as producing quality cattle for the rest of India, because this is an ideal state for breeding cattle. It should be the fruit uh, state of India, the vegetable state of India. A little bit of hand-holding by the government of India would be of great help. So we have asked the government of India that while uh, India sits on mountains of food grains, yet an average Indian is malnourished. And uh, so the food policy needs to be changed. It should be converted into a nutrition policy where an average Indian must have access to fruit, vegetable, milk, and Punjab would be the ideal state for that. Uh, so we have come up with a new industrial policy. We realize that uh, this GST compensation the window is closing very fast. We have only three and a half years left to diversify our economy. And while Punjab has certain expertise in certain domains, like Punjab is uh, the largest uh, manufacturer of bicycles in India. 80% of India's bicycles are produced in Punjab. 60% uh, of India's tractors are produced in Punjab. We are the great uh, largest producers of hosiery goods in Punjab. So light engineering and textiles is uh, a strength. And as a result, and what, what troubles Punjab is that we have the highest population of uh, uh, scheduled castes in any state of India. So a, a lot, and lot more needs to be spent every year in social welfare schemes. We have a, a very rapid uh, urbanization taking place. A lot more money needs to be put in urbanization. Um, we have about 43% of uh, the state's uh, ge geographical area, which is actually difficult area, which means uh, either it is uh, sub-mountainous or it's a, it's a border and it's a live border. It's a very hostile border. We have to keep uh, a disproportionately large amount of police to look after Punjab, unlike Jammu and Kashmir, because Jammu and Kashmir is actually serviced by the Indian military. But Punjab does not benefit from, from that kind of military policing. And uh, we have a police force which is almost uh, 85,000 personnel compared to 45,000 of Haryana and 15% of uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh. So while uh, you know, we are blessed in the sense that we have the lowest uh, ratio of poverty in India, just 8% compared to 24% uh, of the national average. We are blessed that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Punjab has always produced in its sons and daughters uh, the qualities of uh, courage and sacrifice and 
to do anything for this nation. So we are blessed that a large proportion of young people from Punjab have migrated to other countries. You know, and as I sometimes jokingly call, there's a wanderlust amongst young people in Punjab. And if you've heard this very popular Punjabi song, Bari Barsi Khatan Gayasi, you know, every young man is supposed to leave his village and make a fortune for himself. So, uh, so we are blessed that these people keep sending remittances, which are not captured by the finance department. So while in terms of per capita, Punjab has slipped, but if you go to an average village in Punjab, you would realize that somehow the living standards are very good. People have motorcycles and washing machines and television and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I, I don't want to carry on for very long, you know, because uh, Raj said that you must complete within 10 minutes, and then we can go into a Q&A Q session. So last week we had uh, the 15th Finance Commission uh, come in, and we had uh, very long uh, deliberations on our debt, our revenue deficit, and so on and so forth. And uh, I actually finished my, uh, uh, my presentation to them with a little anecdote. And uh, since you know that uh, I am a historian by inclination, and when I was a teenager, I, uh, one of the, the books I read and made a very deep impression on me was the autobiography of one of the greatest Turkish uh, leaders, uh, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. And one incident which Ataturk mentions in his biography is that Ataturk was a very young major, and he was posted as a military attache to a very beautiful country in Europe, Hungary. And he was uh, residing in a city called Budapest. So Ataturk uh, says that one day he went for dinner and he was in his full military uniform. And it, it, it was a very nice restaurant. He was having dinner. And uh, uh, while he was having his dinner, a peasant walked in. And his shoes were dirty. His clothes were a little shabby. And he sat, sat on the next, next tab uh, table next to Mr. Uh, Mustafa Kamal Ataturk. And uh, while he was sitting, the manager of the restaurant, uh, he, he came by and he told uh, very softly, he whispered in the ear of the peasant, he said, excuse me, sir, this is a very fine uh, dining facility and we really don't encourage people like you to come and dine here. So could you please leave? And Mustafa Kamal said, uh, while I was having my dinner, but my ears were in the conversation which was happening at the next table. And what the peasant told uh, the manager is what I told the chairman of the Finance Commission. I told him, sir, uh, I'm a farmer, and I produce uh, food for Hungary, for, for my country. And uh, my son is a soldier, and uh, he's defending the borders of Hungary. And I have every right to sit and dine on this table, and I'm not going to leave. And uh, this is a... <laughs> what we are going to do, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Punjab will be progressed, willingly if possible, but uh, kicking and screaming if required. So uh, over the centuries, uh, Punjab has always run this race in the front. Uh, we have never run the race in the middle. Uh, I'm afraid if we try and run this race in the middle, race in the middle, we might fall down. So, uh, so in the, and I hope uh, today will be a good day that uh, the ideas which I have uh, expressed that uh, this will, uh, you know, we are laying the seeds and uh, I hope we can, and in this fertile fields of Punjab, and I hope the resurrection of Punjab will take place uh, within my lifetime at least. And I must end with a, a very, uh, you know, one of the hauntingly beautiful words of my favorite poet, uh, Muhammad Sir Iqbal. And uh, I, I will quote an original where he says, Nahi hai na umid Iqbal apni kishte viran se that Iqbal, I have not lost hope. Even though my crops have died, my, uh, you know, or dried, मेरी खेती सूख गई है, but मैं ना उम्मीद नहीं हूँ, सर नहीं है ना उम्मीद इकबाल अपनी किश्ते वीरां से जरा नम हो 
तो ये मट्टी बड़ी जरखेज है साकी विद अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ मॉइस्चर दिस अर्थ इस मिट्टी में बहुत दम है साहब विद अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ गाइडेंस विद अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ हैंड होल्डिंग आई एम श्योर पंजाब विल राइज अगेन वन डे एंड आई आई होप दैट यू नो माई जेनरेशन एंड आई आई एम एक्चुअली अवेयर दैट वी आर the make or break generation this is the make or break government for punjab either punjab will make it within the term of this government or uh, we will miss the bus and i pray to god that uh, we are worthy of uh, uh, the challenge which is given to us so thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you thank you manpreet i i think the plea that you made this is a make or break this is punjab is at the crossroads of very very important time uh, now since you've been finance minister before and at that time dealt with the central government uh, this time as a finance minister has there been a change in the attitude that you've seen of the modi government has it been helpful or you're still uh, you know coming across a lot of boulders sir i, I sir uh, just I'll, i'll try and answer it in two parts i have traveled the length and breadth of india in the last 25 years in politics so one thing is there that um, people have tremendous amount of respect and goodwill for punjab all over the country regardless of which state you go to in fact uh, people are generally generous to punjab and i have even at press conferences some of the aicc press conferences which i address and the press tears into randeep surjewala or you know hudda or someone but the moment they see someone wearing a turban they just generally kind to us no but is mr so, but having mr said modi that, kind to you or not <laughs> but having said that <laughs> sir i think uh, uh, governments are governed by the constitution and uh, you know whatever funds need to be uh, you know by the terms and conditions of the finance commission and so on and so forth so whatever formulas are set for uh, but they are civil to us they are civil to us unfortunately uh, i have been the finance minister of uh, punjab uh, the previous time also there was a opposition government at the center and even this time but they are very civil to us but uh, center state relations are governed by the terms of the constitution but they are not mean to us but you have a debt of 2 lakh crores you said that you converted 30000 crores of that into a loan which is a heavy interest burden for you all what has the center done what has the modi government done to recognize that punjab had uh, given its sons to war had strife and done all that has it in any way compensated punjab in the five uh, four and a half years that they've been in power uh, i'm unfortunately sir we have not been able to convince them that uh, uh, as uh, not only are we growing food for india but as uh, uh, the fci is the purchasing agency we are actually the agents of fci so if there are any losses which are suffered on account of food then how come punjab is responsible for that and uh, uh, so the the trick is in what is known as the actuals so while uh, you know when you are handling food grains there is something known as uh, transportation security gunny bag interest payments and all so uh, there is a fci also purchases in punjab so while government of india compensates fci on actuals they don't they do not uh, compensate punjab on actuals so on average every year punjab loses uh, 1800 crores every year which we ring fence ring fence in our budget so to procure food grain for government of india punjab su suffers a loss of 1800 crores so not only in trying to make india self sufficient in food have the people of punjab uh poisoned our soils we have depleted our natural aquifers of water and also we suffer losses on account of food i think sir this is quite unfair we have not been able to convince the government of india but we have been able to at least draw the attention of the 15th finance commission so what the chairman told us and he told the press in chandigarh is that i am going to set up a committee within finance commission Uh, headed by mr ramesh chand who is member of the niti ayog and within 6 months he will actually go into this problem and find a permanent solution to uh, uh, the problem of punjab 
Now, uh, you've uh, had a, a cousin's wife being the uh, food processing minister as well. Has this in any way made a difference? Because what Punjab is looking for is a structural change in terms of agriculture, to move from just producing cereal and grains to, as you were mentioning, fruits and vegetables and agro-processing. Has having a minister in charge of that really made a difference? What is your assessment of Harsimrat Badalji? Sir, if I, you know, um, if I have to be generous to her, I don't think so that department which she is supervising uh, is, uh, has the budgetary allocations or, or is not important enough uh, for her to be able to make an impact on Punjab. So in the last five years, I have not seen that impact in Punjab. So you're being very kind to your <laughs> relative on this. Uh, maybe she doesn't have the budgetary. I, I, I refuse to believe that she does not want, she doesn't want to. So obviously, there must be uh, some constraints of budget where, where she cannot make it. So, but then she would be answerable to the people of Punjab, and I, should, I think I should not be petty about that. And uh, the Prime Minister in the, in the budget recently announced this uh, cash compensation, uh, 6,000 rupees, and the first installment to be paid even before the general elections. What is your opinion about this? Would it make a difference to the farmers? Is it really bringing relief or not? Sir, I think what he has announced is uh, more of a political gimmick. And uh, this is what, not, uh, what the farmers of uh, India had not expected. Uh, my own take, sir, is and, uh, that uh, Mr. Modi had been very lucky. The government has been very lucky that uh, uh, international prices of oil had crashed in the last uh, five years. So there were windfall profits which came uh, uh, the way of this government. And ideally, if, uh, if I were to advise them, and not that they would take an advice from a small man like me, but if I were to advise them, if they had in this four or five lakh crore which they had collected over a period of time, if that could have been used as debt waiver for the farmers of India, and also some kind of interest subvention for the MSME for India, I think India would have rejuvenated. A lot of people, you know, actually advise me that uh, all this uh, debt waiver and all and subsidies, it's actually political gimmicks. But coming from Punjab, I find that uh, this is a, actually a capital investment into our human resource. We must give the farmers of India a second chance. When I was a very young man, uh, they don't happen anymore. We used to have these circuses all over these small towns in India. And there were people who used to do acrobats. And, but they used to have a safety net at uh, the bottom. So if by chance somebody, you know, somebody slips, instead of falling on the ground, they used to fall on the net. I think uh, farmers of India deserve that safety net. And if Mr. Modi had done this, I mean, uh, the sixth budget in five years, interim budget, it, it had never, this is the first time it's ever happened, sir. So I think it's uh, now too little, too late, sir. Okay. And you were mentioning about uh, developing dairy farming in Punjab as one of the diversification drives. How much of this business of cow slaughter and your, you know, uh, began to impact the dairy business? Has that in any way, you know, uh, hurt the finances because they're now not able to resell the cows or, uh, you know, gain from uh, th those that are not productive anymore? So Punjab has uh, actually been one of the leading dairy states and per capita milk output is almost one liter a day. Um, and uh, so Punjab was doing very well. And as a state, we had decided that uh, we will be promoting cow, you know, because the, the yields in uh, cow are you know, significantly higher. And uh, also, as I said, uh, as a breeding state for India, an average cow in India uh, per year lactation is about 3,000 liters, sir. Whereas uh, a good cow anywhere in the world, the lactation is about 12,000 liters. So if India could just increase its uh, milk yield from three to 6,000 liters, we would have doubled our GDP in milk. And what we, we have seen in Punjab is that the dairy sector is becoming increasingly important. It's almost 60% of what Punjab produces in terms of agriculture GDP. And in the next few years, it'll, agriculture and dairy would actually be competing with each other. So, but what this, uh, uh, this Gauraksha can, you know, that whole whatever has taken place, that we are unable to transport our dairy cattle to different parts of India. And I think the yearly losses to Punjab, I, I wouldn't be able to quantify, but 
I would perceive something between two to three thousand crores. And as a state, then we had to shift our policy from breeding cows and we've shifted back to buffalo again because nobody will let you, you know, develop cows in India. And uh, if you take a look at, uh, you know, uh, you, you worked with two uh, chief ministers, uh, Prakash Singh Badal and Captain Amrinder Singh, and it's a more personal question. What is the difference you found between uh, working between the two? Sir, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh uh, likes to delegate work. Uh, Captain Amrinder Singh, if he trusts you, then he will trust you blindly. And uh, he would then expect you to deliver. Uh, Badal Saab uh, does not delegate. He likes to do everything himself. Uh, he doesn't trust. And then he also doesn't uh, you know, expect you to deliver. So I think these are the two differences. And <laughs> what is your relations currently with uh, Mr. Badal uh, Sr. as well as your cousin Sukhbir Singh Badal Ji? Sir, I have not spoken them, to them for a very, very long time, except for, uh, you know, on some social occasions, uh, some Ram Ramaya, Dua Salaam, but not more than that, sir. But your uh, cousin, Sukhbir Singh Badal ji, uh, uh, calls you uh, uh, more of a poet than a finance minister. That was his <laughs> criticism. <laughs> what do you have to say to that? Sir, I think uh, in the last 70 years, uh, a lot of these so-called uh, big leaders, uh, have not delivered, and uh, I think uh, a, a chance must be given to even emotional people. For example, sir, uh, Abraham Lincoln, when he was trying to abolish slavery, it was a very unpopular thing to do. It was not what uh, uh, the rest of America wanted, but would uh, anybody have remembered Abraham Lincoln if he had not uh, abolished slavery? Mahatma Gandhi, when he came up uh, against untouchability, you know, in, in rural India, people were actually aghast. He, this is madness. But would anybody have remembered Mahatma Gandhi had it not been what he did for uh, the downtrodden of India? So, so sometimes, is, so sometimes uh, I think people, uh, you know, even these emotional uh, people must be given a chance because uh, other people have not delivered. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, in terms of industrialization of Punjab, which is very critical, what, your government has been now in power close to almost two, uh, in two months' time, will be two years. What have you all done to ensure that industry comes back to Punjab and starts making the difference? So because uh, we are desperate and the hunger to succeed in Punjab is now reached a level, you know, because failure is something which is not an option for us. So Punjab has actually uh, come up with a new industrial policy uh, wherein uh, which is probably gives a lot more incentives to than any other state of India. For example, we have even foregone uh, not just the state share of our taxes, but even goods which are sold outside Punjab. You know, most states give tax concessions on goods which are sold within the state, but we have also given tax concession on goods which are sold outside the state. And we have asked, uh, you know, any manufacturing companies, they can recover almost 200% of uh, the investments they are making. Um, so we are also in the process of setting up uh, mega industrial parks. So we realize that unless we diversify, Punjab is not uh, going to make it. And uh, we have been very encouraged that in the last 20 months, about uh, 35,000 crore odd crores of investments have started coming in, not MOUs, but actually coming in, uh, and especially in uh, food and uh, uh, food-related items. Sir. Now, when you were speaking to us, uh, you had mentioned that uh, Punjab requires a structural revolution in terms of its productivity, moving, shifting from agriculture to agro-based industries. What is it that you need to do uh, to ensure that that happens? Sir, over the thir last 30 years, if you look, states which have either long coastlines or big metros, so those are the states which have actually prospered or come up and uh, people, uh, states like Punjab, actually, is, if for, me, for us, it's actually a double jeopardy because in agriculture, not only do you have to maintain the infrastructure of roads and all, but without the commensurate economic activity which, which is taking place. For example, sir, all we have a border with Pakistan, uh, 553 kilometers 
no meaningful activity can take place on that border. So as a result, and if you want to get in service industry, we will have to uh, get meaningful investments into uh, urban Punjab, and especially in and around Chandigarh. So what Punjab is doing is that uh, around the Chandigarh airport, international airport, we are uh, going in for uh, a 5,000 acre uh, aero city. You know, and this is going to be for uh, commercial, non-polluting industry and all, where people, the convenience of uh, having an airport close by and you know, trying to do business out of Punjab. So uh, luckily, we've had uh, Amritsar is an international airport, and so is Chandigarh. So un if we can develop these urban centers as growth centers, and then have two counterweights, uh, one being uh, in Batinda, uh, uh, which is southern Punjab, and which and has- And your constituency now. <laughs> uh, my constituency, fortunately. <laughs> and uh, so this is, and where the entire hinterland of, say, Rajasthan, all the way to Bikaner, is serviced by Batinda. And all the way uh, in, uh, from Hisar, uh, people come to Batinda. I think Punjab would be able to, in the next uh, decade, become a vibrant industrial commercial. Uh, and what has also happened is that uh, before GST, uh, our tax rates in Punjab were abnormally high. And with the coming of GST, it's become a level playing field. Um, Punjab is actually the gateway to Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal. So anyone trying to do business uh, for North India, Punjab would be an ideal location, sir. And just, just before sure. it gets too long, sir, uh, Punjab is the only state of India where we have never had an industrial lockout. There are no trade unions in Punjab. And the productivity of uh, a Punjabi labor, and this is not me saying it, but we have three or four German companies like Class Combines and Goetz and all in Patiala. And they have quoted that the productivity of a Punjabi labor is as high as a German labor. Hmm. So if anybody wants to come to Punjab, I think the biggest uh, advantage is in terms of labor. We have abolished the truck unions, which was a big impediment. And what this government has done is that we have reduced the rate of power from seven rupees 60 paisa a unit to five rupees a unit. And we have frozen this price for the next five years. So with a combination of all these policies, and investments into urbanization, I'm sure, sir, investments will come by. And uh, Punjab has some of uh, the finest uh, uh, universities and technical colleges, including ISP and all. Um, things will change, sir. Now, you haven't changed two fundamental things uh, of agriculture in Punjab. One is that power continues to be free. Is this a wise policy to continue, or is it political suicidal for you all to withdraw it? It's almost become like the Kashmir problem where <laughs> nobody can decide on this. But having said that, uh, we are in talks with uh, uh, I, both the World Bank and with the government of Japan, with JICA, that we have 1.4 million pumps. And if we can uh, go in for solarization of pumps, that every, every pump is solarized. And if that capital expenditure can be incurred in one time, and that technology and science is available, then this subsidy on free power, we, can, should, uh, we don't have to do, go in for perpetuity. And uh, instead of paying 7,000 crores as agriculture to subsidy to the uh, Bijli board every year, I can start paying the World Bank. And then we are done and dusted. So every Kisan owns his own tube well, his own uh, solar thing. And not only that, he would stand to benefit because the moment he is not using that, because you don't use the pump every day, he can actually pump the electricity back to the electricity grid and actually make a profit of it. So this is uh, what we feel is the way forward, sir. And the other thing that uh, was the loan waivers that uh, your government announced, it's already implement, implemented much of it, isn't that a drain to your finances? You're already on ICU, and yet you're giving out doles and uh, you know, seem, seemingly financially profligate. Sir, as I said, uh, a lot of people think that these are doles, but uh, as I said, uh, this is actually a in capital investment into a human resource. You know, we can't have uh, farmers' suicides taking place. Uh, as governments, we have to not just look at the balance sheet. We have to actually look at uh, the human suffering. It has to be an inclusive growth. And the biggest uh, lien which uh, the people of Punjab, I mean, the 
the poorer you are, the higher lien you have. Uh, but having said that, sir, the loan waiver which took place in Punjab, it was outside our budget. We have uh, an agricultural marketing board, which uh, when food grains are sold, they charge a certain amount of cess and uh, fee on uh, all food grains sold, and which is about 3,000 crores a year. So this whole uh, loan waiver which took place was outside the Punjab budget. So it was part of government, but outside my budget. Sir. And one of the things that you all needed to do was to wean farmers away from cereals, get them to diversify into fruits and horticulture. Has that movement really begun? Or we are just, uh, you know, uh, uh, staying things without actually implementing any of this? So wean away young people, not just into diversification, but just give them the skill sets and actually wean them away from farming itself. So if you have, uh, if Punjab's uh, GDP, which is actually double than the national average, if uh, agriculture forms almost 23% of our GDP, and if 64% uh, of the people are engaged in agriculture, if 64% are actually trying to earn 24 rupees, then naturally those 64% people are not going to be very well off. So the, I, I would be very happy if 24 people were trying to make 24 rupees. So the idea is to give our young uh, sons and daughters of Punjab the skill sets where they can be employed gainfully outside agriculture. So, so that is the challenge. And of course, uh, as I said, if, if Punjab could be developed as a, a, a dairy state or a fruit state or a veggie state, but for that, you, there would be some investments required from government of India in terms of coal storage because these are very expensive things. But th this is going to be the future of agriculture. Uh, a, 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 a Kisan of Punjab, he's, he's very adaptable. He can take risks. But a little bit of hand-holding, I, I think we should be able to get there. So. And uh, the other issue that, of course, uh, since I live in Delhi, Punjab and, of course, Haryana is always blamed for burning crops and causing pollution to the capital, apart from its own cities over here. What have you all done to tackle this problem of crop residues and reduce the intensity of that? So uh, obviously, uh, we, are not, uh, we are actually aware of this problem. And it is actually an environmental catastrophe uh, which uh, takes place every year. Uh, and not just Delhi. So, I mean, Delhi is, uh, uh, is actually looking at the wrong way because uh, Punjab is not responsible for Delhi's pollution. But having said that, it's our children and our cattle and our you know, people who are affected by it. And uh, over the years, uh, we have tried to get all the stakeholders on board. This year, uh, the crop burning, if uh, the cha vice chancellor of Punjab Agriculture University is sitting here, if, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, it was significantly lower. I will not be able to put whether it was 30% or 40% or 50%. I spoke to uh, the union finance minister because they had just raised the price of uh, uh, rice or paddy by 200 rupees. And I suggested to him that, uh, and, it could, and this was in my personal capacity, not as a, uh, as a minister, that if this uh, 200 rupees could be linked to not burning your crop, because 200 rupees and 30 quintals of food grains from, from, uh, from rice would convert to 6,000 rupees. And this is exactly what it takes uh, to, to take care of the paddy stubble. But then he told me that politically he will not be able to handle it. Uh, but what we have also done, sir, is that while uh, we have received 300 crores from government of India, to buy machinery which takes care, you know, in terms of rotovators and balers and so on and so forth. But diesel was so expensive because after all machinery is run on diesel and Kisan is not actually in a position to run that machinery. And in my first budget, we had also come up with a $1 million straw uh, challenge fund that if any university, any scientist can give us the technology that uh, uh, this, uh, this stubble uh, can be taken care of uh, uh, scientifically or in a sustainable way within the field. Within 15, 20 uh, days, it can be degraded that you, know, you don't require it to burn. So Punjab uh, government has come up with a $1 million challenge fund, and which is increasing every year because uh, interest is being added to it. 
but so far nobody has come but within the kisan population also uh, there has been a lot of awareness and you have villages upon villages which have taken the pledge not to burn it sir and one of the issues that youth face here is uh, drugs of course and we've talked about that there's been grave concern about it what has the your government done about uh, either uh, getting of course first pro providing rehabilitation and then skill development and other issues so that more you don't get back into this habit so uh, so it has to be a multi pronged approach and that's what the government of punjab has adopted uh, so we have uh, got the religious uh, leadership involved we have got uh, the ngos involved we of course there's a police angle so it has to be done and uh, if i'm not mistaken um, it's on the glide there has been a lot of shame and name and shame uh, these are real children they belong to some parents uh, and drugs actually it's a cycle and i think the cycle also is running out but as a government we have gone in for in three manners one is supply reduction which is the police angle to it and the second is what is called harm reduction uh, and by harm reduction is that if somebody is taking drugs then you put him on a drug which is a, a level or two levels lower and that which and slowly he can be de addicted and uh, the third is something called demand re reduction so we are actually identifying uh, young people at what age in school and all and creating that awareness so between supply supply reduction harm reduction and demand reduction we have seen very positive results in fact uh, uh, there is a, a very specialized task force uh, called stf you know special task force which is headed by very competent uh, and very uh, you know people of very high integrity running this uh, organization and this is something unique in the world where punjab has st started something called a buddy program you know where five or six uh, young children from one gali or mohalla they, they all come together and they are buddies and there's a senior buddy and then they sometimes try and identify people who are either taking drugs and you know how to wean them away and so this program this buddy program has been quite successful i'm going to i think do we have uh, time or uh, for a few questions from the audience nitya yeah Okay, I'm going to open this up, but before I do that, I'm just going to, you know, I was driving in yesterday, I called the Shatabdi in, and I took a taxi, and I asked the taxi driver, which is what most journalists do, is, what do you think of the government? And he said, sir, they have not paid salaries, there's nobody is giving anything, was, Badal Sarkar was better, at least they were doing things, this government talks, but doesn't do anything. What's your, this could be just one person, so I'm not saying this is a generalized thing, but uh, are you all bankrupt? that uh, the, the, even a taxi driver thinks you can't pay the salaries that are due? Sir, I think he's been mistaken. Uh, we have never defaulted either on salaries or uh, pensions or even uh, debt servicing. And uh, uh, I mean, the day we, we took over the government, and this is for the first time in the history of Punjab, that uh, treasury had to be closed by the Reserve Bank for seven days. But we have, you know, since then, as I said, we've augmented our resources, we've cut down on expenses in a huge way. So this day-to-day uh, -day problem of, I think he's totally mistaken. In fact, uh, your officers are getting salary on time and they're not. I mean, free. there's no question of, and <laughs> okay. not just Punjab, in I any state of India. <laughs> it's in any state of India. This, okay. this can never happen. Okay. You know, the government okay. can't default on that. All right. Uh, let's open uh, for a few questions. Uh, anyone here would like to ask Manpit ji? There's one hand. Yeah. Here, uh, here and yeah, okay, we'll start with this gentleman first. Yeah, please, please. Uh, Manpreet Okay, ji. after this, yeah, you please speak. Uh, yeah. Chingapa sahab ne abhi aap se sawal kiya tha ki aap ne Badal sahab ke saath bhi kaam kiya hai aur Captain sahab ke saath abhi kar rahe hai. Mera sawal ye hai ki aap us government mein bhi vit mantri the aur abhi bhi finance minister hai. Is baar jo aap ne promise kiya hai aur pichla backlog aap jantte hai ki Punjab ki financial situation us samay kya thi, ab kya hai. प्रॉमिस आपने इतने सारे किए हैं फ्री में मोबाइल देंगे किसानों के लिए हर आ, आ, सेक्टर के लिए आपने प्रॉमिस किए थे तो इस सिचुएशन को देखते हुए इन प्रॉमिस को आप किस तरीके से फुलफिल करेंगे सब ऐसे है कि कई तकरीबन 250 पंजाब के लोगों के साथ वायदे किए थे और उसमें कुछ 
कुछ नए कानून लाने थे कोई एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स थे कुछ कुछ ऐसे भी वायदे थे जिनकी फाइनेंशियल इम्प्लीकेशंस नहीं थी और तकरीबन तकरीबन ढाई सौ में से तकरीबन 180 पूरे हो गए हैं कुछ ऐसे वादे थे जिनकी फाइनेंशियल इम्प्लीकेशंस थी जैसे डेट वेवर की बात थी जैसे तो वो भी इस बार वो मुसलसल सही चल रहा है जहाँ तक आपने मोबाइल फ़ोन्स की बात करी है तो उसका भी जो टेंडर जो है वो हो चुका है और जो एल है वो शॉर्टलिस्ट हो चुका है तो आपको ये बात तो समझ मतलब मैं आपको इस बात पे कायल करूंगा कि जो किसी भी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी के वायदे होते हैं उसका जो जो उसकी मुद्दत होती है वो पाँच साल होती है तो पहले दिन या पहले साल या दूसरे साल में तो सारे पूरे नहीं हो सकते तो मैं आज इंडिया टुडे के इस काले कैमरे की आँखों के ज़रिए आपको इस बात का विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूँ कि जो भी पंजाब सरकार ने वादे किए थे या पंजाब या कांग्रेस पार्टी ने किए थे हमारी हर मुमकिन कोशिश है कि हम उन पे खरे उतर सकें जेंटलमैन यस प्लीज या माय नेम इज डॉक्टर रोशन सुमकारिया एडिशनल चीफ सेक्रेटरी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पंजाब लुकिंग आफ्टर फॉरेस्ट एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ एट प्रेजेंट एंड सोशल जस्टिस दिस इज बेसिकली इन कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ वॉट दिनांस मिनिस्टर सेट regarding this uh, 31 crore uh, 31000 crore legacy account which was converted into loan just one day prior to this government coming to bank now i happen to be in the uh, department of food and civil supplies now out of this 31000 uh, crore as on date 18000 crore is only on account of the interest now my only point is i am not against uh, the diamond dealers or big business uh, men of the country who are advanced loan at the rate of 8% or 9% but in this case punjab which is purchasing food grains for the people of india they get this money at an interest rate of 11% and this interest is getting compounded year every year after that so that's why this entire amount and probably the whole interest policy of the government of india to my mind is very faulty especially for food credit you know you cannot have so much of interest rate so this is something uh, you know through uh, your uh, you know this conclave uh, i would request that it need to be highlighted and in the interest of uh, people of the country we need to have right kind of uh, policies regarding this thank you so Like exactly, sir. But, sir, now the, what uh, Mr. Sankaria has said is that the principal amount was twelve thousand crores. Then they charged us interest and compound interest. So from twelve thousand crores, we will now have to pay sixty thousand crores at the end of the twenty uh, years. I think this is actually unfair. But वो जो हिंदी में कहते हैं कि तकदीर ही खोटी है कभी सैतालीस आ गया कभी इकहत्तर आ गया कभी कुछ आ गया दस नॉट इवन टेन ईयर्स ऑफ पीस बट सम हाउ आई डोंट नो वाई पंजाब हैज आई थिंक पंजाब वॉज बिल्ड फॉर सेक्रीफाइस वेल यू नो दिस ब्रिंग्स अ लॉट ऑफ ग्लोरी बट इट ऑल्सो ब्रिंग्स अ लॉट ऑफ पेन आई जस्ट हैव अ क्विक क्वेश्चन आई नो जेंटलमैन देर देर जस्ट हाफ मिनट पंजाब यू सेट ओज टू लैक क्रोज एट द मोमेंट दैट्स दॉट ऑफ डेट द स्टेट इज if you had a game plan to to solve this what would that be how could punjab say in 5 10 years get rid of this debt so that it doesn't feel like uh, you know it's being burdened so much so one is that i'm banking very heavily on uh, the 15 finance commission and to settle this 31000 crores if we if we can get a break on this and get some kind of debt relief on this so that will be a break uh, also sir we need to increase the gdp and especially like when i said when you need to industrialize punjab 2 lakh crores may look very big you know if if your if your cook had to pay someone uh, 50000 rupees it would look very big to him but for mr chengappa 50000 rupees would be peanuts no no it is uh, and, it's still a lot of money yeah. so, so <laughs> i'm if, a journalist if we can increase <laughs> not a politician increase the size of our economy to a situation where 2 lakh crores would look very very small so that is the game plan to increase uh, uh, economic activity in punjab try and get some debt relief from the 15th finance commission 
which we, I think we deserved. I mean, the 13th Finance Commission, the 14th Finance Commission, they gave debt relief and revenue deficit grants to both Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Bengal. But for some curious reason, I mean, I, I it just, you know, I, I can't believe it. They left Punjab out. So we are hoping that if we can get this in the 15th Finance Commission, revenue deficit grant and debt relief, I think Punjab will be able to take off. What about this special status? You had complained that uh, the neighboring states got it and that deprived Punjab of industry. Are you all still asking for it or that's over? Sir, they have actually now last year or a year before that put a sunset clause on it. But that is in 17. So it will take another 10 years. So by 2027, we'll be rid of it. But having said that, sir, who gives the right to the federal government to destroy one state's economy at the expense of the other? Why would they do it? I mean, it, I mean, it defies belief, you know. But that's what happened. And we are the victims because one had to just move 10 meters into Kashmir or Himachal. So when you see that entire industry of Baddi or, you know, Correct. all sorts of Jammu and all, and the entire, so the flight of capital took place, not only in the 80s, you know, in the entire industry of Haryana, whether it's Gurgaon, Panchkula, Panipat, is actually Punjabi industry. And the entire industry of Himachal and uh, uh, Jammu is Punjabi industry. So I don't know, sometimes, like I said, fate kind of uh, you know, conspires against Punjab. <laughs> There's a question from that gentleman, yes. Yeah, not a question. Just some information. I am B.S. Tillam from Punjab Agriculture University. And the information is about Paddy Star Management. Can you speak into the uh, uh, this yeah. thing, Mike, sir? Thank you. Yeah. Paddy Star Management. We had uh, 30 lakh hectare under Paddy, out of which 45% was uh, managed. 8 lakhs by incorporation into the soil and 6 lakhs by retaining it as a much with the help of the well-known machine, Happy Seater. And last two a year before, it was one, less than 1 lakh. So it is a big leap. In the remaining area also, there is partial burning in most of the cases. You just travel in the countryside and uh, it is very evident. Thank you very much. So there is a lot more awareness now and on people are doing it on their own. You know. That's good to hear. I think there is a student who wanted to ask. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Sir. There, uh, Hello. just that good young, afternoon, yeah. sir. I'll give you a chance, don't worry. Adil Yusuf from Chandigarh University. Uh, I'll, I have a question about the backbone of the Punjab, that's farmers. How farmers are committing suicide and as per the NSSO survey, the uh, monthly income of farmers is 7,000. So how your government is tackling the issue? Because Punjab is known for the productivity. And we are just witnessing how much suicides are taking place as per the, as per the survey. 3 lakh farmers are, have committed suicide from 1993-2015. So what steps are your government is taking uh, towards the backbone of Punjab, the reformers who are committing suicide. So what are the strategy of your government in upcoming, in upcoming days or in upcoming years for the farmers? My question is very straight. Sir, um, I mean, it's surprised me and I've been in politics for 70 years and Punjab being the leading agricultural state. And even I didn't know that. Punjab did not have an agricultural policy. So a leading state, agricultural state of India, did not have an agricultural policy. For the first time, you know, we have actually put an agricultural policy in place. So second is that in the last 70 years, the mantra of agriculture in India and also Punjab had been productivity, productivity, productivity. So for the first time, government of Punjab has changed this from productivity to farmer welfare. So the question was that when farmers are committing suicide, what are you going to do about it? So the first thing which we did was, of course, a debt waiver, which a lot of people criticized. But sir, the net has to be there. But debt waiver alone is not going to solve that problem. So it has to be a multi-pronged approach. And as I said, it has to be weaning away young people from agriculture, trying to get uh, farmers a remunerative price for their produce, diverse, diversification and so on and so forth. So it has to be a multi-pronged approach, but debt waiver is just one of them. I, I, let's welcome Mr. Rakesh Bharti Mittal, the president of CII. He's just come in and he's going to be our next speaker. There's a question there. Sir, sir, you talked about solar pumps. 
the ground reality about solar pumps is every farmer want to get that connection but they are installed in the fields if within a month they are stolen and the material is costly use copper aluminium can there be a check on this on the stolen material sold to the scrap merchant sir i think what we are looking for is some kind of technological breakthrough even in solar technology where you know uh, the, the technology becomes cheaper and more proven obviously we are not going to start with the whole of punjab we will take pilot projects maybe from block or district and slowly you know scale it up so that's what we are going to do that in case uh, japan uh, is very keen to sell us this technology we were not really aware of you know what kind of technology they have they have agreed to fund it and they fund it at almost 1 or 2% interest uh, rate uh, so that could be one we are in talks with the world bank if they could fund the project and let's see i hope in the next 2 3 4 years this technological breakthrough in uh, solar energy takes place where we can actually pump out water without actually having to uh, pay substantial amount for the electricity of you know, power for it i'd just like to spend 2 minutes since mr mithil is here manpreet ji what would you like mr mithil cii president to do for industry uh, for punjab sir he uh, is someone uh, who is uh, a uh, rooted to uh, this soil he actually belongs to punjab he is a thought leader for indian industry and uh, uh, and also a well wisher of punjab if you have to tell him so one or two things what would you want to sir i would ask him or beg of him to do some hand holding uh, for punjab and whatever he says i am willing to drink a poisoned cup <laughs> as long as it can cure punjab sir. and i'm going to ask rakesh ji uh, please give him the mic what can the ci what a ci want from punjab since the finance minister is here you might as well get your demands in or whatever you would propose to do first of all i can only say that we'll be giving many poison tops <laughs> to the to the finance minister because punjab I'll needs it uh, having said that um, we met in davos and uh, we spent uh, some good time on what uh, we need to do in punjab and uh, as the president of cii and more importantly as the son of the soil i can tell you we are ready to not only handhold but also actively uh, work with the punjab government uh, one of the uh, biggest issues has been on the environment uh, you know stubble burning CI did a pilot last year uh, where we worked around uh, on 16000 uh, acres and a group of farmers none of them burned the stubble i mean all of them said this is something which we must do for the environment and for punjab so there are many other areas where we can talk about are you happy with the power situation are you happy with the incentives that industry is given what more would you all want well you know industry will always say dil mange more <laughs> let me let me say that but having said that i think it is not the policy initiative i think it is the implementation my view is the time has come when punjab needs to swallow the bitter pill uh, uh, forego the appeasement policies and more importantly look at uh, delivering uh, the ease of doing business reforms at the district level at the administrative level i think that's what the industry requires and manpreet ji your uh, this thing what are you here is the industry captain saying ease of doing business Uh, and what are the certain poisons you want them to swallow what are those poisons <laughs> sir uh, the bottom line is uh, i will not shirk my responsibility uh, my right arm and a red carpet sir <laughs> but ease of doing business please answer i mean people are looking for specifics what is it that this government can do to change that notion that you know somehow it's very difficult to get things done in punjab Uh, that's not true, sir. In fact, uh, what we have done in at district level, we're talking about level. district level. Yeah, sir, uh, we have an organization called Invest Punjab, uh, and the CEO of Invest Punjab is actually vested with the powers of 22 departments. So, the moment the application is received, he can sanction the power load. He can sanction uh, the CLU or you know whatever whatever needs to be done. So, it's a it's not a single window because single window then goes to 28 window. he himself is empowered and the entire 22 departments actually sit in his office and we have decided that this invest punjab initiative will be taken to every district of punjab so they will have an office and a block in every every place in fact many states have actually copied the punjab model no but i think what yes yes 
Yes. Punjab. I think this is a recommendation we made to the Prime Minister also. If India has to go through the top 50 rankings on ease of doing business, the World Bank ranking, in a sustainable manner and long term, we will have to go to the last mile. Having said that, one of the other recommendations which we have made, and I was very happy to see yesterday or day before, the, the ranking of states on agri-reform and agri-business. Punjab must take lead on that being an agrarian state, and I will be sharing my views uh, later Great. on. Great. And the final point is, I'm sure you're looking for land uh, as industry, you're looking for infrastructure, drainage, power. Is that something that uh, you would be able to provide? Definitely. I mean, all the concessions that they would be looking for. Definitely, sir. In fact, uh, Punjab is a hugely power surplus state at the moment, and for the next five years, uh, there is no shortage of land. Luckily, the spikes in land prices have come down significantly. So I think pricing of land, availability of land, power and all that is not there. And as I said, there's a desperation in Punjab now and a an hunger in Punjab to somehow succeed. The fact that I met him in da at Davos for the first time, Punjab marked its presence because, you know, we were told all our lives in 56 years of my existence, ki, if you want to see India great, please go and join the army, please produce food for India. We didn't realize that, you know, we had to industrialize and try and get an industrial base. We have uh, started rather late in the day. Uh, we're trying to catch up and I hope we can leapfrog. I see Mr. Munjal here and uh, welcome, sir. Uh, prominent and eminent industrialist of the state. One minute, one question that you would like uh, Manpreet Badal to do for, for Punjab or for industry. Uh, I think one of the concerns uh, for the state to be able to do all that uh, you are saying uh, that you would like to do would be the financial state of, of the state itself. Uh, how do you hope and expect to match the budget if you are actually able to attract industry and implement all of the programs that you have in mind in terms of supporting them uh, financially through tax breaks, etc.? So, um, so, uh, I think uh, the direction which we took, uh, consciously took uh, in the last uh, uh, two years we've been in government almost, is uh, a financial consolidation of state, uh, state finances. And we have been consistently reducing our fiscal and revenue deficits. And I hope uh, in the fifth budget uh, which I present to the governor of Punjab uh, or the legislature, we are going to be a revenue neutral. You know, the deficits would be wiped out. It, it required a huge amount of uh, commitment. And uh, you'll have to believe me, uh, uh, you know, in this, uh, even in the GST council, I get to meet all the finance ministers of, uh, of India. And there's actually a fraternity of finance ministers now. And the joke amongst us is, that if you're popular with your colleagues, you're not doing a good job. So I hope I remain unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have to wind out. Two great industry leaders are here. Manpreet Badalji, we'd request you to stay on and listen to them. But thank you, thank you very much for the time, patience, and those wonderful answers that you gave. Let's give them a very, very warm round of applause. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.